Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to compare series and parallel connections when we talk about light bulbs. On the left side, we have a parallel connection where the light bulbs are in parallel to one another. Here we have a series connection where all the light bulbs are connected to the source in series, assuming that each is connected to a 120 volt source because that's what we have in normal household circuitry. We have a 120 volt source. This is how we connected in real life. And there is a reason for that. Notice that the potential, the voltage across each light bulb will always be 120 volts because one end of the light bulbs all share a common node and the other, not, the other end of the light bulbs all share a common node. And we know that the voltage across each branch must always be equal and must always be equal to the source to which it's connected. In this way, we can turn on and off light bulbs at will Anytime a switch closes, a light, bulb be, a light bulb will be turned on, and it doesn't matter how many light bulbs we turn on, they will always be connected to 120 volts, and each light bulb will have 120 volts across it. What happens, though, is as you turn more and more light bulbs on, each light bulb will require a certain amount of current. Each branch will draw V over R, the applied voltage divided by the resistance of each light bulb, and so you can see that as you turn more and more light bulbs on, more and more current will be required. That's why there's usually a safety valve. We have what we call a breaker that will actually turn off the ability for the circuit to provide uh, current if you turn on too many light bulbs and too much current is being drawn because the source essentially is the power plant down the street. And if the power plant can continue to provide more and more current as you draw it, it will become dangerous as more current drawn means more power dissipated in the wiring and the wiring can get hot. So you want to limit the amount of current that can be drawn by any given circuit. That's why multiple circuits will be, uh, will be installed in a particular home or a particular apartment because you don't want to overload any, any one circuit. Notice the current increases by V over R for each light bulb that is turned on. In a Sears connection, it's very different. Notice that the more light bulbs you put on your circuit, the higher the resistance of your circuit and the lower the current. Also, the voltage across each light bulb will depend upon a ratio of the voltage supplied by the circuit, the total voltage, times the ratio of the resistance of any one light bulb divided by the resistance of the total light bulbs. The more light bulbs you put on your circuit, the lower the voltage across each light bulb and the dimmer they become. And essentially, when the voltage drops too low, the light bulbs will not light at all. So the more light bulbs you put on a serious circuit like this, the less dim, the more dim they will be and eventually you will no longer see them burn. The current always is equal to the voltage supplied divided by the resistance total. Therefore, V sub R, the resistance across each light bulb, which is like a resistor, is the current to the circuit times the resistance and the current being V over R can be written as V times R divided by R total. That will be the voltage drop across each resistor. Of course, I'm assuming for simplicity that the resistance across each, res each light bulb is the same to make it a little bit easier. Notice the current decreases each time a light bulb is added. Also, you cannot turn any light bulb off. If you turn off a light bulb, then it will break the circuit. For example, if you break one of these light bulbs, there no longer is a full connection on the circuit and all the light bulbs will go out. If you break one of these light bulbs where it turned on, you will still provide current to the other light bulbs and it will make no difference. Of course, the only thing that you don't want is you don't want a short circuit here because then all the current will go through the short circuit, none through the resistors of the light bulbs, and then of course you have a problem in that respect. But it's easy to see that this is the ideal situation for household circuitry because you can connect as many uh, light bulbs or many vacuum cleaners or toasters as you would like. If one breaks, it still allows the other the other items on the circuit to work. Here, if one breaks, the circuit simply goes dead and you don't see anything at all. One more thing I would like to mention, the Christmas lights. Back in the old days, we had these long strings of Christmas lights and if any one light bulb broke or no longer worked, the whole set would go out. And then we would have to go and start unscrewing each light bulb, putting in a what we would think would be a good light bulb to see if that was the broken one. And we do that for each light bulb until we found the one that was broken. Now, what would, we, what would we do if there were two light bulbs that didn't break? Well, then we were in real trouble because we would we replace each one of them and the entire series would still not work. Nowadays, they have 
better, better light bulb sets uh, for Christmas, for example. Now they have them where you can have one breaking and all the other ones will still work or only a portion of the, seri of the series will not work and another portion will. In other words, sometimes they connect them in blocks that are in series, but each block can independently either turn on or turn off so that part of your, your light bulbs will still work and part of them will not. Interesting enough, it's so sim similar to what we have here on the board in understanding why Christmas lights work and not work depending upon how they're wired up.